we are hearing in Bhagavad Gita. Yesterday we heard that Gyanis, after many births of spiritual practice, finally they come to this realization that everything is Vasudev, only Him exists. Everything is connected to Him, everything is coming from Him, everything is Him. There is one non-dual truth, Vasudev, they get, and such realized souls, they are Mahatmas, and they are very rare in this world. In Baikunta and up, ah, there are unlimited such, but in this world they are rare. And more rare are those who are having spontaneous single-minded devotion to me, means that Braja Prem. And also we heard that Sakama Karmins or the fruit seekers being deprived of my transcendental knowledge and steeped in the gloom of ignorance and actuated by their desires for fruitive actions or moksha, betake themselves to sundry non-devotional paths, means many type of variety, and worship the fruit giving petty gods, being controlled as they are by their own nature. They're, they're on that level of adhikar, so they have faith in this. This we heard yesterday. Yo yo yam yam tanum bhakta shrandayar chitum ichati tasya tasya chalam shradham tam eva vidadham nyaham. As an indwelling guide of all jivas and other gods, I infuse them with unshaken faith in that particular god whom they wish to worship according to their predilections. <clears throat> Explanation. The gods are not the indwelling abider. They are my subtle, tiny vibhutis or imperfect, transient manifestations of my fruit-giving powers in relation to the mundane world on the astral plane. The fallen souls cling to them for their selfish ends. The more their desires are fulfilled, the greater is their fate pinned in them, but not in me, the Lord of all Lords. Because they are on such level, say, so they also get such faith from Krishna. He gives them. And once they are getting some results from their worship, then, then it is increased. But unless they will gather enough Sukriti, it will be impossible for them to have faith in Supreme Lord, the Lord of all Lords. Sataya, Sataya, Shradaya, Yuktas, Tasya Radhanam, Ilhate, Labhate, Chatatah, Kaman, Mayeva, Vihitan, Hitan. That worshipper of minor gods begins to worship that god with increased avidity. There are some English words here. They are more old uh, British English, that Indian British English. Gurdjieff also used similar, uh, but some words I don't understand. Avidity. Increased avidity. He gets the fruits of his worship from that God granted by me. 
the Krishna is giver actually. They are only instrumental. Without Krishna sanctioning, no one can give anything. But those worshippers, they think I'm getting from demigod. But ultimately, Krishna is the giver of all fruits and also of karma and everything. Others are only instrumental. Explanation. The worshippers of minor gods receive their desired fruits from these petty gods whom they worship with increased avidity. Now it opened. Avidity means keen interest or enthusiasm. Keen interest I can understand and enthusiasm but not avidity. <laughs> so with increased avidity but they get their fruits only through my agency because the gods have no power to confer any boon upon their proteges unless they are empowered by me. That is why also we cannot blame anyone for our suffering because Krishna is the giver of fruit Others are only instrumental, whoever he may be. Uh, either from our own body and mind problems, from other living entities or from demigods, natural calamities. But they are only instrumental in uh, conveying the fruit. Actually, Krishna is giver of fruit. Without his sanction, nothing can happen. And he is all good. And no mistake in him. Antavatu palam tesham tad bhavati alpomedasam devan deva yajoyanti mad bhaktayanti mam api. The result of such worship by the short-sighted, silly worshippers is finite and transitory. It ends in fiasco with the end of the worshippers. <laughs> fiasco. Usually politicians, they are using this word for some, when explaining activities of some other fiasco means a complete failure, especially a ludicrous or humiliating one. The politicians, when they will speak about some other, they will say he, that is his fiasco. So here, it ends, their worship ends in fiasco with the end of the worshippers. Complete failure. The worshippers of minor gods go to them, while the worshippers of my divine personality come unto me. Explanation. The truth embodied in this shloka is this. As is the worshipper, so is the God. The gods are imaginary deities created by the mental mold of the worldly minded man to fit their own imagination. But figments of the brain are not realities. They are ever changeable and hence perishable. But the Supreme Lord Shri Krishna is eternal. His devotees are also eternal, their souls being immortal. Hence, their devotion to him is also eternal, and the fruit thereof, which is divine love, is also eternal. 
So demigods, they are existing on that astral subtle plane. Then there is Biraja, and after that starts eternal reality, spirit. And devotion is eternal because Krishna is eternal and devotees are eternal, so devotion is eternal. And fruit is divine love. Vyaktam vyaktim apanam manyantemam abudhayaha param bhavam ajananto mama vyayam anutamam. In previous verse, I forgot to say, usually our Srila Bharati Gosai Maharaj, he used to say that Shastra gives some light. Uh, descriptions this all pomedas means little intelligence they are not saying stupid or idiot or crazy or like this but all pomedas means little intelligence but in some places also krishna says mura he's a fool naradama like this mura means mura he will, it will come later on. Those who deride Supreme Lord, thinking him ordinary human being, they are muras, foolish. The ignorant, the here the word is abudaya. The ignorant means the impersonalists. Consider me as something unmanifest at first, Brahman, and made manifest afterwards as human form liable to perish. They do not know my supreme, transcendental, eternal human form. Yes. Explanation. Not to speak of the worshippers of minor gods, even those er erudite scholars of the Vedanta philosophy are quite ignorant of my spiritual eternal human form. For, says Brahma to Sri Krishna, O Lord, he who is blessed with the minutest grain of favor from the couple of thy lotus feet is in the know of thy glorious deeds and none else. Even if they are in quest of thy truth for aeons on the strength of their empiric knowledge, you need to receive the grace because Brahma himself realized this point in Brindavan. He could not recognize Krishna. He tried to examine and everything with his knowledge, but Ultimately, he became bewildered, then he submitted to Krishna, then by Krishna's grace, he could understand him. Then he said this, it is impossible without your grace. Also, when Mahaprabhu came to Puri and Sarvam Bhattacharya was attracted to him, and but he thought he's a young sannyasi, so I will have to teach him Vedanta, otherwise he cannot keep his sannyas vows. I will teach him only Brahman is true, this world is all false. So no need of any sense in German. That I will have to teach him. But Gopinata Charjo, who knew who is Mahaprabhu, he objected. What you were thinking, you will teach him something. He is Supreme Lord. Then Sarvam Bhatta Charjo start to argue. Why you say Supreme Lord? In Shastra, it is said, he appears only in three yugas. So it is not. Then Gopinata Charjo and they were arguing. Then ultimately that Gopinata Charjo said, you cannot know Supreme Lord by your logic and scriptural knowledge and intelligence in this. Only if you get his grace, you can know him. 
then Sarum, but the charger said, and yes, I'm not having grace and you are having grace. So what is the proof of this? Then Gopinata Chandra said, the proof is that I got the grace because I know his Supreme Lord. By his mercy, I know. When you will get his grace, you will also be able to understand, not before that. So ultimately it happened. Sarum Bhatta Charjo was thinking he is a foolish Gopinata Charjo. I know everything. I know all Shastras. I'm householder, but I have a, I have I'm teaching Vedanta to sannyasis. I know everything. He had this ego. But ultimately he was also bewildered, means astonished at what Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was speaking to him. What kind of explanation he gave to Vedanta Sutra and Bhagavatam? Then Sarvam Bhattacharya understood he is not ordinary human being. Then he submitted. He could understand he's having superior knowledge than me. Then he submitted, and then by the grace of Mahaprabhu, he could realize that really he is Bhagavan. Then he praised him also as Bhagavan, Sarvam Bhattacharya. Then Gopinath Acharya said, I told you, before I told you, but that time you could not understand. Unless you receive the mercy of Krishna, you cannot know him. And at that time also, not only of Krishna, but Sarvam Bhattacharya could realize the position of a devotee of Krishna, about Raya Ramananda. Also Brahma in Vrindavan, he also could realize the personal associates of Krishna. They are not ordinary. And Brajadham, first he thought is some village there, but then he saw the opulence of Vrindavan. Not opulence in these diamonds and this, but in sweetness, in charming, how, uh, how beautiful it is, everything. So unless one gets the grace, he cannot understand. So here, impersonalists, they uh, may try by their empiric knowledge, but impossible, unless they receive that grace. And grace is nimnaga, means always flowing down, like water always goes down naturally. Like that, grace comes to one who submits. Immediately when you submit, immediately you will get. Hence, the Vedantins of the impersonal school, however versatile their scholarship may be, are silly enough to think highly of their wrong and untenable theory of impersonal monism and designate me as impersonal Brahman who assumes temporary and imaginary forms such as Ram, Krishna and others for the well-being of the sadhakas or neophytes in spiritual practice. Mayavadis, they think like this. So, though they may chant Krishna now, even worship deity or whatever, but if they have such conception, they are impersonalists. From outside you may see they are like devotees, but not totally different. So one has to be very careful to detect what is someone's conception. Uh, and they are, they think very highly, Saravam Bhattacharya said, I am the greatest scholar in the world, I know everything. Also, when Gurudev was in in a some, some place. Then one professor in one program, he spoke this, that ultimate reality is without any form, without any potency, without any uh, attributes, nothing. If without percent. If he would have form, that means limitation. That is their logic. Because we experience there is a form in this world. 
and forum is limited. So unlimited must be without forum. That is their logic or personality. Like they just negate all these worldly things, they negate and they think that is ultimate. But they don't know that Supreme Lord is omnipotent. He has a forum which is unlimited. This is beyond your logic of this world. How Jashoda could not bind Krishna? And every time two fingers short, even when she uh, added more and more ropes, how this is possible? And how whole Brahmanda is inside Krishna's stomach? And the real one, not imaginary one, because Jashoda could see herself inside that. If she moved here, head, then that head inside Krishna's body in that universe, her head moved. It's not false, it's real. Krishna is omnipotent. What we can uh, try to limit him by experience of this world and logic. That is why those who are uh, relying on this and not submitting to Krishna and not receiving his grace, they have no chance to understand. Totally they will be in ignorance. So, that time that professor spoke and he said, but because we are unable to meditate on that impersonal Brahman in the beginning stages, so that impersonal Brahman takes one forum, material forum, limited forum, so that we can concentrate on that. But when concentrating and meditation, then ultimately that will be, you will overcome, overpass that, and then you can meditate on impersonal Brahman. Then Gurudev was to give vote of thanks. So Gurudev said, you spoke nicely, but there is one question here. At first you said that ultimate reality is without any potency. Impotent, without any potency, cannot do anything. <laughs> Cipher. Then, how, if he has no potency, how he can accept some form? He can do nothing. If he's without any potency, then how he can? And, if in ultimate reality there is no form, then how we can see this form? and ultimate reality is nirguna, no qualities, then from where satya guna is coming. And if it is all illusion, then to whom you are speaking and why you are speaking. There was another one fat lady, Gurudev went for collection and spoke about Mahaprabhu teaching and requesting to give some for the service of the temple they will build. She said, uh, when she was hearing that teaching of Mahaprabhu, she said, this abhed is good, but bhed is not good. Abhed means no difference, but bhed is not good. It is okay for, for beginner, but ultimately there is no bhed, no difference between jiva and brahman. Jiva, jiva brahma, uh, Jiva Brahmaiva Napara. Jiva is Brahma. Means Supreme Lord. No difference. Then Gurudev explained much, but she could not uh, understand or accept because lack of Sukriti. Then she said ultimately Brahman Satya Jagat Mitya. Brahman is truth, Jagat is all false. Then Guru said, then where are you now? You are in this world. So if this world is false, you are also false and your statements are also false. So why I will listen to you? Then Gurudev left. Because that is irrational. Gurudev said irrational talk. You are saying Supreme Lord or ultimate reality is impotent, but then you say what he's doing. 
or here you are speaking something, you try to say it is truth, but from false uh, platform, then how this is possible? And another one was, Gurudev was with him in the room, same, because at first he was Mayavadi, but then became attracted by Parangurde and took Harinam, but did not yet clear all those past conceptions. So they were together in the room with Gurudev during the time of Parangurde. Then he said, this is okay, Krishna Ram, this to worship in the beginning. Like here it is said, but ultimately there is no forum. Uh, no personality, it's impersonal. Otherwise, limitation is there. Then Guru said, no, this is not correct. Our Gurudev is not giving this teaching, so where are you? And Gurudev tried to explain, but he would not accept. Then he said, uh, ultimately, Gurudev asked him, where you came to know about this? Our Gurudev did not teach this. He said, from previous Guru. Then Gurudev asked, is he having any forum? any personality, your previous guru, he said yes. And his guru from whom he came to know, he also, does he have any personality or any form? Yes, so like this, if you go back, you give me one evidence that from something impersonal and something formless, such knowledge came. You give me one evidence, one instance. There is no, then he could understand. That is all irrational. Something is the cause of something. Nothing cannot be the cause of something. So, and also it is in Shastra, Jatova, Imani, Bhutani, Jayante. So many scriptural evidences there. But unless you come to that platform of Sukriti and Shraddha and having real understanding of Shastra, then this impersonalism will be there. And you, you try to explain them, it is irrationally logical or anything, but they cannot understand. Buddhists also, I, I try to show to someone how illogical, how he, uh, irrational he's speaking when trying to prove some points. Then ultimately he has no answer, then he said, no, you have to realize, then you will understand. But if you realize, then you can explain. But there is no, no such, so that is not uh, the thing. But you cannot make them understand unless they gather enough Sukriti. So you have to accept this also as reality, as Krishna's, uh, as reality, because Krishna made such arrangement. He, out of desire to perform unlimited pastimes, one of his pastimes is also this, that he is making this creation and marginal jivas who are prone to get to go down, or they can come to him. So this is one of his lila. So he made this lila like this. Those jivas who want to enjoy this world, they can enjoy in different species. And they also get a chance to gather Sukriti in this world by coming in contact with some act of devotion, knowingly or unknowingly, taking prasad or seeing Vaishna or hearing Harinam from some Vaishnav, then when they will gather, then they will get that understanding and they can remove Maya and go to Krishna. That is Krishna's arrangement. So when certain Jiva will collect that, that is individual, so we cannot force anyone. If now he does not have Sukriti, and I try to explain to him, like Prahlad did to, to Birochan, but he's unable to accept, unable to understand, then I have to accept this is the reality. It is Krishna's will like this. Why I want to go against his will? Krishna made such arrangement, 
that now he is unable to understand because not gathered enough Sukriti yet. Here also Krishna said, four types of persons, they don't surrender to me. But four types will. So if I really am devotee of Krishna and I am preaching for the service of Krishna, then I have to accept this reality also. If I become angry or try to force or something, then I'm not actually devotee of Krishna because I'm not accepting Krishna's arrangement. Then I'm only acting as a devotee for some worldly benefit I'm preaching, for collecting more and more people, but, and then if they don't come, then I become disturbed. That is not actual preaching, it is not service of Krishna. How Pralat could accept? that Birochan, he has bad samskaras, no sukriti, so he cannot become devotee, and he accepted. And he moved on like that. So those who have no other desire except the service of Krishna, they are not disturbed, but always in the service of Krishna, and they see this as a reality. This is also one kind of reality, and also Madhya Madhikari, he sees, there are some jivas who are innocent, ignorant, but they are not against. So they will try to convince them, explain to them, and they will accept. But there are some who are against, so Madhya Madhikari has to avoid them, not wasting time with them. So it is the instruction for Madhya Madhikari to avoid those who are against. Then someone would think, but no, we have to convert everyone. We have to convert everyone uh, because the whole world must be uh, like this. But then why in Bhagavatam it is stated that those who are Madhya Madhikaris and they are the ones who are doing preaching because Uttam Madhikari will not do preaching, Madhya they are doing so why it is stated there that it is their duty to avoid those? Why, why it is not written in Bhagavatam by Krishna? No, you, you, then you use more force. You use more force and more, more this you use. If they don't accept, then you kill them, you force them. Or, no, it is stated you avoid them. Because only wasting your time and his time, he has to realize he wants to enjoy this world, so he will do that. And once, when he will get so much suffering, and if he will have Sukriti, then he will inquire about the truth, why this is happening, then he will become open to know, to understand. When this will happen, when it will happen, it, it will not happen by uh, when I want for my own pleasure. It will happen when it will happen. But now the situation is like this. He is not accepting. But some are accepting. So Shridhar Maharaj said, he replied to one person there in South India, if I have some food for distribution and some people are running away, then will I run after them or I will distribute to those who are there waiting in the line to get that. So it is like that. When Srila Bhakti Pramod Puri Gosai Maharaj, he told to Gurudev, yes, you have to go to Western countries because it is the desire of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to preach all over the world. They should know that they can worship Supreme Lord by chanting Harinam and it is meant for all. So you should do. But you should not think whether they will accept or not. That is not your business. Your business is you have to inform and inspire them. So some will accept. Some, not all. Some will accept. So why you want to deprive those? Also, so this we have to accept as reality. If not, then how we are devotees of Krishna, not accepting his arrangement. 
Also one time Gurudev gave me one article uh, in Delhi, he wrote it, he gave me and he said, you read it, you understand it and make, make others also understand. You explain to them. Then after some seconds, Gurudev said, some will think, some will not. Means some will understand or accept and some will not. So it is the reality. You have to accept this is the fact. In future they will be able when the, their time will come. Like yesterday I spoke about the mother of the devotee. When the time came she accepted. Why I have to control when it should be like that? That means I have some ser separate desire of my own. So I am not devotee. I am not devotee, but I am trying to make others devotee. It, will, it cannot work. I am not devotee, I am not accepting the reality. So here, this, they think I am impersonal Brahman, but I assumed some material form. That is their thinking, but it is totally wrong. Deluded by my Maya, they declare that I have no eternal form and that my manifested human form on the mundane plane is subject to birth and death like that of the mortals. Because we see Krishna was shot by a hunter into the hill, not in the heart or head or some vital part, but in the hill. Generally, one man will not die if you shoot him with arrow to the hill. He will get pain and that he will get, but he will not die. The how Krishna died. So what is he something? You are saying Supreme Lord. He is ordinary human being. Even no power. He is killed by some arrow in the hill. They think like this because they don't know this is Lila, drama. Krishna is making drama of taking birth and Krishna is making drama of his disappearance, Lila. But those who have no capacity to understand, they will, they will think this is like this. Why? Because Krishna here is deluded by my Maya. But those who are devotees, they can realize oh, this is Lila Krishna doing acting like to deceive the atheists. All this is due to their entire reliance on their empiric knowledge, means from their sense experience and intelligence and logic that is empiric knowledge. They rely on this only, which is liable to fourfold effects, viz. Error for the committing mistakes, inadvertence means in a, inattentiveness, not clearly seeing, defective senses and tendency to deceive others. This is in jivas. They want to cheat others, deceive for their own benefit. Immediately when they get opportunity, they will catch only those who believe in karma, some morality, that there will be bad reaction, or those who believe in God, he seeing everything, they will not. At, at least they will hesitate to cheat. Maybe due to weakness, they will still cheat, but at least they will hesitate. But those who are immoral atheists, they will cheat all the time for their own benefit, they think this is very practical. They do not believe in the transcendental reality of me, the Supreme Lord. They consider me at first as something unmanifest, Brahman, and later made manifest as some form. But they do not know that I am not at all intelligible to limited human understanding being always veiled 
by my internal spiritual controlling potency known as Yoga Maya. Brahma could realize this directly. And Sarvam Vatacharya and all. So these four things are there, defects. And this is also one wrong conception that ultimately it is Brahman then becomes man. That is totally wrong. But they are not able to understand. So you have to accept this as a fact and uh, tolerate. You have to tolerate. Uh, that they will do their own thing, you have to do your own thing and don't waste time. If some are running away, they don't want to accept your food, then don't run after them because then you will miss those who want to take food. So the only thing is if we have some other desires. But those who have only one desire, service of Krishna, no any other desires, then they can have no uh, suffering, no problems, nothing. Problem is only in me, other desires, except service of Krishna. That is the root of all problems. Aham prakasha sarvasya yoga maya samavritaha muroyam na bijanati lokomam ajam avyayam. Yes, here muro means uh, full. Here it is very clearly, this is very famous verse and it is very important verse. Krishna is saying, being always enveloped by my internal spiritual enlightening potency known as Yoga Maya, I do not manifest myself to the fallen souls. For this reason, the people of this world, being deluded by my Maik potency and hence ignorant, do not know at all my eternal, beautiful Shama Sundar human form. Naham Prakasha Sarasa. I am not manifest to everyone. Even when Krishna came to this world and everyone could see him, but not all could realize who he actually is in truth. They taught some human being and they fight, fought against him like this. So here Krishna is saying, Naham Prakasha Sarasa. I am not manifest to everyone. So if Krishna is saying this, then how I, conditioned soul, can think, no, I will reveal Krishna to everyone. Everyone will accept. I will go, I will preach all over the world. I will make everyone accept Krishna as Supreme Lord. How this is possible? Krishna himself saying, I am not manifest to everyone. I am manifest to devotees, those who submit to me not to everyone. If they are averse to me and have no inclination to serve me, then how they can understand me? And I try to show Krishna to them. But how I can show Krishna? Krishna has his own will and it is his will and his arrangement that those who will submit to him, they can know him, they can recognize him. Those who will not, they cannot understand him. Hiranyakashipu saw Bhagavan directly, but could not recognize. Pralat could recognize his Supreme Lord. Same person standing in front of them, but one could recognize one not. So then how I conditioned soul will convince everyone in this world to see Krishna, to accept, I will give them darshan of Krishna to everyone. Unless that person is inclined to submit to Krishna, unless he does not submit, he cannot know. So, I may try 
to persuade some jivas, motivate them to submit to Krishna. That much I can do. But what they will do, it is up to their sukriti, their samskaras and their free will. So if by my advice they will submit to Krishna, then they can realize. But if they don't, then it is impossible that I will show them, I will push Krishna into them. <laughs> not possible. Krishna himself said, I am not manifest to everyone. Naham, Naham Prakasha Sarvasya. Yoga Maya Samavrita. I am with, I am behind my Yoga Maya. Muro Yam Nabijanante Lokama Majamavya. They cannot understand me. Those who are foolish means those who are in Mahamaya. That is why Gurudev was repeatedly saying this verse in all his last Harikatas. Atashri Krishna Namadi Nabhavit Grajam Indre Sevan Mukha Hijivado Swayami Vaspuritada. No one can realize Krishna's name. Name, forum, attributes, pastimes, associates. Associates not Brahma. He, he said, I could not even understand your associates, cowherd boys. What to speak of you? So you cannot understand by inductive process by your material senses and intellect and all this. It is totally, Guru said, that transcendent reality is totally sealed from me, totally closed. Sealed means that very close, uh, heavily closed. Uh, so that, that is sealed, no one. Unless he submits Sevan Mukhe, unless he becomes inclined to serve Krishna, he cannot understand. But when he will become, then Krishna will reveal himself to him uh, there. But not to those who are not surrendered. And I cannot show Krishna to anyone unless he is ready to submit. If I think I can show Krishna to others forcefully, then I, I myself don't know anything about Krishna. Anything. I, I show that I am a devotee and I am a preacher, but by my action, I prove that I have no any understanding of Krishna, nothing, zero, 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 if I try to do this. Krishna is not under our control and he knows to whom he will reveal and who can recognize him. The, uh, if I'm using this wrong method, then I'm not devoted at all. Explanation. Those who are deluded by my Maya are quite ignorant of the fact that my eternal, beautiful Shamasundar form in the blissful realm is always hidden from the material as well as the mental gaze of the fallen souls. Being gross senses, subtle senses, they cannot understand him. You cannot imagine Krishna. That is why Prabhupada warned, don't try to artificially meditate on Krishna's pastimes by your mind, material mind, mental. You submit to Krishna, you chant his name without offenses, go on doing this, then Nam will reveal the actual form of Krishna. No need for you to separately, artificially try to imagine the form of Krishna. It is beyond your imagination. You cannot imagine. It has to be revealed. If Guru gives some description, then also those descriptions we have to, with submission, we have to accept. If we don't accept with submission, then we will get wrong conception even of bona fide description of Krishna. With submission, we have to accept, then it can be revealed.
all descriptions of Shastra, we have to accept with submission, through submission. Otherwise, we'll misunderstand, trying to understand by our empiric experience. But that will not match, it will not be correct. I am not, I am hidden, being always enveloped by my internal spiritual enlightening potency. I'm always behind the curtain of my yoga maya. Do not think, O oh Arjuna, that I was unmanifest at first and made manifest afterwards. That is wrong. Krishna himself telling, know that my beautiful Shamasundar forum is eternal, like the self-effulgent spiritual sun in the blissful realm, and that, though unborn, yet I descend into the mundane plane out of my own free will, and being omnipotent, I always keep intact my manifested eternal beautiful Shamasundar form, a fact which is beyond the can of ignorant people who are deluded by my deluding potency, Mahamaya. This fact about Krishna is, is not known to those who are bewildered by Maya. That is why Krishna says, said in fourth chapter, but one who will know me in truth about my birth, about my activities, and also about my disappearance and everything, this is his activity, one who knows that is that he will never take birth again. He already got devotion to me. That is why he can know. So one who has devotion to me, he will not be born anymore. Here, Arivati is asking something in chat. What does it mean to accept with submission? We have to hear Srimad Bhagavatam for the satisfaction of Krishna only, not to gather some knowledge out of curiosity or for some, for some, uh, let me hear much Harikata or uh, Bhagavatam, then I can give nice lectures. People will shout Jai at me and like this. So if this is my target when I'm reading Bhagavatam or hearing Bhagavatam, if it is not the service of Krishna, my target, then that hearing will not be hearing of Bhagavatam. With submission, I am of Krishna. I am hearing about him to serve him. If with submission, with service attitude, I hear descriptions about Krishna from Gurudev or Bhagavatam or other Shastras with submission, with Sharanagati, then I can catch what is there. That will be revealed to me. But if there is no submission, then I will interpret what I am hearing I will match that with my some empiric knowledge. I will hear Krishna is blue color, dark blue. Then I will think Krishna is dark blue. I know. I saw dark blue color in this world. So Krishna is like this. It is not like this. Not like that dark blue color of this world. So with submission, when you hear, then that will be revealed what is meant by that dark blue color. It's not worldly dark blue color. Like that, how much we can submit to Gurudev, that much we can understand what he meant. And sometimes we can realize this after much time. After many years, then suddenly you will under, oh, this is what Gurudev meant. When you will be ready to, to know. You will be eligible to know. And that time you can also, at that time you can realize I could not have imagined this, or it is beyond my intelligence, beyond logic, beyond anything worldly. It is, it is coming from there. So unless I am open to receive it as it is, through submission, 
then I cannot catch that. That is beyond my imagination. So, Shravanam, uh, Pralat said, Shravanam, Kirtanam, Vishnu, Smaranam, all nine forums, but there is one condition there. These are not bhakti by itself, by themselves. Iti Pungsharpita Vishnu, one who will submit to Krishna, to Vishnu, Krishna, one who is surrendered, meaning he is inclined to serve Krishna. He knows I belong to Krishna and I should accept what is very all Sharanagati. If Sharanagata devotee, if Sharanagata person will do Shravan, that will be Bhakti. If Sharanagata person will do Kirtan, that will be Bhakti, otherwise not. Without submission, without Sharanagata, it cannot be Bhakti. It may look like outwardly, but it is not. That is why in that book, Hrit Rok Kam, Gurudev said, we may see some person doing so much bhajan, in brackets, so much bhajan, but this result is not there. He is not getting uh, realization of Krishna. He is not having devotion to Krishna, dedication to him, and his ulterior desires are not removed. Then you can know he is not doing bhajan because Sharanagati is not there. That will be worldly activity, not bhakti. Bhakti starts when one is surrendered. So this is what I meant to accept with submission. You should not try to imagine what Gurudev is speaking. But you have to hear with submission, to hear his sound with submission. Then that sound will reveal its meaning. You cannot understand it by your material gross and subtle senses and imagination and uh, categorizing and um, intellectual like this, then you then you you are not actually receiving what Gurudev is speaking. One who is surrendered, he can understand what Gurudev is speaking. Gurudev said in Gita, when Arjuna surrendered, when Arjuna surrendered, then Krishna spoke to him and Arjuna understood how we know he understood? Because he acted on the order of Krishna. At first he was not ready to fight, giving so many reasons. But ultimately, when he understood through submission, then he said, yes, Krishna, now I understand by your grace. Now I will act as per your order. So unless one submits like Arjuna, and it has to be shown by his activity. He cannot understand Gita nothing, zero, 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 zero. Our Gurudev used to say zero, zero, because it is really zero. That is why he was repeating few times zero, because really it is zero. It is not zero point one, zero point two. Like no, it is total zero. If there is no submission, anything in relation to Krishna is total zero. So you have so many false explanations of Gita in this world. So many false. Why? Because they did not submit to Krishna. Then how they can know what he's speaking? That has to be revealed. Not that you will understand by knowledge of Sanskrit or some intellect and like this. No, and they are doing nonsense activity. Even Gurudev said, after the disappearance of Mahaprabhu, all books were there, but so many pseudo sects cropped up. They are doing nonsense activity in the name of Mahaprabhu. How this is possible? All books are there. Because you cannot understand those books without Charanagati. Total misunderstanding. And action proves that. So, how we'll get that Charanagati? We have to associate with Charanagata and learn from him and apply his instructions in our life. What is favorable, accept. What is unfavorable, reject. 
All this what Gurudev instructing that we have to accept that is Sharanagati. Then, uh, because it is only possible like this, that is why Mahaprabhu said, unless I send one my personal associate Sharanagata devotee to this world, they cannot understand. So he sent Bhaktivinoda Thakur Prabhupada. Without the association of Sharanagata devotee, we cannot get Sharanagati awakened within us, and we cannot practice properly, and we cannot understand the books, what is written there. Okay, so it means to listen with faith. It means to listen what is coming, not to imagine. You have to uh, hear openly what is coming, receiving that, accepting that with submission. I, can, I don't know how to explain otherwise, with submission. We are low, he is high. We are dependent to get that. So we have to submit to receive it. If I have one glass of, no, some person has a glass of water, I don't have it and I'm thirsty. So I have to receive it from him. I cannot get it by my own effort. I will have to submit to that person and receive that glass of water from him to get it. Otherwise, I cannot get it. By my own effort, I cannot get it. I have to submit to him. I have to depend on him. And by his will, when he gives, then I can have it. Like that, we have to hear with openness not with trying to uh, judge and categorize or imagine or, or like this. No, but with openness, what he what he is speaking. Because words he is using, those words don't have same meaning as these same words used in material sense. That is why Bhakti Nantaku repeatedly warned against this in Jeva Dharma. I told you some explanation. But words carry some limitations of this world. They carry some limitations. So you will not be able to understand unless you will realize. So you have to practice to realize. And with submission means we are hearing with open, not with already some ideas, but really to receive what he's speaking. And when that will enter our heart, then if it is with submission, then one day, the more we can clear our heart of influence of gross and subtle matter, the more we can realize what is meant by that. And at the same time, we will realize it is, it can, I could never have imagined anything like this with my mind or intellect. It is impossible. Like Brahma, we will say, let them say what they want to say. Those who say, I know God, let them say. I give them Dandavat from far away. But I can say, by your grace, that you are totally beyond my mind, intelligence, senses. And I know, now I know, by your grace. It is totally impossible that I could imagine like this. Totally impossible. So why I will use my, intel uh, my imagination and my worldly experience to try to understand you? You are totally beyond. So its submission means without any filtering, without any uh, ideas, without the, all prejudices, all this is totally useless, garbage. You have to throw far away. Udapasya, totally you have to throw far away. Udapasya namante, you have to submit, bow down, then you can receive when you are open. Brahma said, so we will also realize this. We will also realize once we get some 
transcendental realization by the grace. Then we, at the same time, we will also realize it is impossible that I could have imagined like this. It is totally beyond all these limited senses like this. Then, then we will understand and then we will not rely anymore. We will not rely anymore on our material senses, gross and subtle, because we know that is beyond. And you can get that only through submission, not by any of your this, uh, inductive method. Is useless. It is impossible. One example Gurdjieff used to give that boy was born in a cave because his parents are prisoners or in prison house. He never saw sun before at any time. His experience is if he wants to see something in dark place, he needs to take one lamp and then he will see that dark thing. This is his only experience he has. So one time that uh, jailer, he told to boy, today, go with me, I will show you this sun. You will see the sun. Then the boy said, OK, I will go. But wait, I have to take my lamp. Then the jailer said, no, you don't need any lamp to see the sun. So how, what do you mean? I'm not a foolish. I know in order to see something, I need lamp. How otherwise I will see? Means he's limited to his own experience. He never saw sun before. So he's trying to understand because it is seeing, so he connects. So then forcefully that jailer took the boy to the sun. And when the boy saw the sun, then he could understand. Oh, this is what, there is no need of any light lamp to il illumine the sun. He self-luminous. I never had any such experience before. Then he understood taking lamp to see the sun is totally useless activity. It is a block. Like that, we will realize using our material senses, ideas, prejudices, intelligence, all experience, all alphabet of this world, all language, or everything, totally empirical, whatever you collect, it is all useless, rubbish. It is fit to be totally rejected. But we are so much proud and attached of these things. That is why we cannot get glimpse of Supreme Lord because we are attached to this. But we have to throw this far away and submit. Then you can realize and then you can understand this is all useless, totally useless. Then you will practice Sharanagati, not anymore uh, some controlling tendency. Controlling tendency, uh, <laughs> no, we cannot control. So this example is there, and the Gurudev also said, if you try to bring all the lights of Calcutta or Paris or Mirepoix or Ljubljana or any place in this world, you collect all lights, can you see the sun in the night? No, you cannot illumine the sun. How much you gather? You know that is totally useless activity. Because the sun, you cannot illumine by these lamps. Sun is self-effulgent. You have to wait for his grace. When he will rise, by his will you can see him. You cannot forcefully get him by controlling him. How? We have to throw far away this ignorance, arrogance, that we can get him by some our will that we have to throw, hatefully we have to throw and be open, submissive, under the guidance of pure devotee, hear submissively from him, practice submissively, then Krishna will reveal, then you can understand, oh yes, that is all useless. Shridhar Maharaj also told, you will, this alphabet which you know in this world, it will not work there. That is different alphabet there. 
whatever learning you got from this world is all useless to know that. That you can get only through submission. To be open to receive it. This Sharanagati we have to practice by coming in contact with real surrendered devotee, Gurudev. By his instructions, we can uh, practice Sharanagati because he is surrendered, so he can teach us. When we practice that Sharanagati, then what devotional forms we will do with Sharanagati, that will be accepted as devotion, otherwise not. Tomorrow we will hear further.